Magic Kingdom shortly after the apartment was released, and a woman came up to him and said, how could you? You spoiled the Disney image, and she hit him over the head with a pocketbook. It was one incident I remember with Fred McMurray. <laughs> Fred McMurray is at the desk, and he's talking to his family, one of his children. And he's saying, hmm, no cavities. And Billy says, I didn't write that. Billy Wilder and Izzy Diamond would never let anybody change a word of dialogue in their script. And I had one line where I had to say, poor Mickey, he's kind of like a little chihuahua. The line was, he's like a little chihuahua. So they said, Hope, he's like a little chihuahua. He's not kind of like a little chihuahua. I said, okay, poor Mickey. He's kind of like a little chihuahua. Diamond jumped up over the uh, side of the brownstone, over the stairs. He jumped up over the side and he said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Like a little chihuahua, not kinda. I said, okay. Hmm. He's so cute, five foot two, 99 pounds, like a little chihuahua. If you take a look at Billy and Izzy Diamond's writing. That's where it all comes from, man. Every beat, every comma was a gem. And if there was anybody who deserves to have his words said just right, it would be Billy and Izzy. But at the same time, Lemon would bring a tremendous physicality to that script. While sticking to the script, he brought so much of his own comic genius to the film. What was not in the script that Jack Lemon improvised was the nasal spray, which he had the props department fill with milk. And at a given moment in Sheldrake's office, he squeezes it and an arc flies across the cinemascope screen. You realize if this ever leaked out? It won't! And Wilder realized that it made the scene better. Believe me, it never again. It, 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 nobody is going to use my apartment from now on. That's another reason why he loved Lemon. Lemon was so inventive with business. The bit about the spaghetti and the tennis racket, that's another image that you can't forget. That was in the script. What was added was his singing while he was tossing the spaghetti. That was pure Lemon. But Billy Wilder and I.A.L. Diamond were constantly writing. Even when we were shooting, their minds were moving. They'd see something in an act and say, hey, that looks real good. Let's feed that a little bit. So we would get a few more pages and a few more pages. Billy Wilder, often when he was filming, he may not have had a completed screenplay. He was a writer who worked hard and could work every day writing. So due to the fact that he tended to film somewhat in script order, he didn't feel that he was under terrible pressure if he started to film without a completed screenplay. Billy and Izzy started to write the script for the apartment. With 29 pages, we went to work. And what they were saying was they wanted to see the chemistry develop between myself and Jack Lemmon and possibly Fred McMurray and see what happened. We didn't know how it was going to end. We didn't know what essentially the plot was. We trusted Billy and Izzy. I never saw a screenplay. It wasn't that. I think that's the only way that Billy can really work. And if he gets to know somebody, then he writes for them. Wilder learned that Shirley MacLaine had been playing gin rummy with her friends in the Rat Pack. I was hanging out with Dean and Frank, and they were teaching me how to play gin rummy, and Billy put that scene in. He thought it might be a good way to kind of develop the relationship between Fran and Baxter, to have them, after this crisis, when she tries to commit suicide, to have them just be at ease in each other's company. What do you call it when somebody keeps getting smashed up in automobile accidents? Bad insurance risk? It's me with men. There was a wonderful scene that came in later when we were having lunch at the cafe at Goldwyn Studios and I was having some kind of disastrous love affair and I said, oh, why do people have to be in love with people anyway? Why can't they be in love with kangaroos or something? Billy said, that's it, that's it. We went back and he rebuilt the set. He was very flexible, that German-Austrian scientist of comedy person. Why do people have to love people anyway? I don't know what you mean. There were two phases to the production. One was the location phase, which started uh, the production in New York. And 
the weather in the apartment is generally speaking pretty bad and unfortunately it turned out that the weather didn't cooperate at all and was too cold and too miserable well there's a certain scene jack lemon was sitting outside on the park bench drenched waiting for somebody to vacate his apartment and uh, the water that was supposed to be rain was actually freezing on him. It was so cold the night that they shot it, it was 14 degrees below zero. So the story goes that they got some grip with, with some antifreeze to go and spray him with the antifreeze in between takes. <laughs> this poor guy. Look, buddy boy, if there wasn't a lady present, I'd clobber you. All right, Carl. And in one scene, supposedly I come in and I find out that Jack may have been seducing my sister-in-law, Shirley, and I get upset about it, and I hit him. But Jack wasn't a very physical guy. So Billy said, explain to him what he has to do. I said, Jack, it's like a ballet. One, two, one, two, and I go, one, two, and I miss you by that much, you never get hurt, you fall down, and we got a shot. He says, got it, got it. He says, by Jove, I've got it. I says, okay, let's do it. Billy yells action, and Jack is saying in his mind, one, one. And he forgets the two. I came across with this one, came across with this one, and on the second one, caught him with these two fingers. He went up horizontal like this, down to the floor. We all ran over because star of the show, my God, I might have killed him. I said, Jack, Jack, I only hit you with these two fingers. He says, I'm glad you didn't hit me with the fist. <laughs> so the cameraman says, is that a print, Mr. Wilder? He says, he hit him right in the kisser. We can't do any better than that. <laughs> the day that we shot the brother, I had never really seen a scene. We had never done a master of it. You see, Billy would never shoot a master shot. He would know where he was going to cut, so he didn't want to waste any time. So sometimes the artist wouldn't know the emotional buildup of the scene. Billy knew, and so what he did was break a piece of wood real loud underneath the camera. It scared the dick inside of me, and that's how he got that reaction. That was not acting. That was bending to Billy's Austrian will. In Billy Wilder's cinema, everybody talks about it's a cinema of words. It's also a cinema of images. Wilder developed a very important collaborator in Alexander Trauner, his production designer. He created all those wonderful sets in the apartment and the apartment itself. The apartment is meant to be as personal as you can get for Bud Baxter. It comes in contrast to years of cinema in which you have these grand, you know, Central Park West MGM Art Deco apartments. It's a little run down, but that makes it comfortable and warm with the warm lighting and the warm decor, but the apartment is in dire contrast to this opening set, consolidated life, that office building. Billy Wilder he used to talk about the set, and he said, this is our chariot race, referring to Ben-Hur, which won the Oscar award the year previously. He said, this is our chariot race. The set was enormous and elaborate, and it was a trick of perspective. They staggered it so that you had very tall people and big desks in the front, and gradually smaller until the very end. They either had dwarfs or children. It was on a set at Goldwyn, which I was on when I was like nine years old, and just marveled. Oh, look, things get smaller when you go back. And then at some point, it ends in a painted backdrop, which disappears into infinity. And of course, Lemon is the archetypal worker bee. You just feel this complete sense of frustration and unfulfillment and being one of a crowd. The visual scheme of the film emphasizes the plight of the two main characters. Cece Baxter and Fran Kubelik are these cogs in this much greater machine and both kind of vulnerable victims of it. Both Wilder and Lemon believed that this was a film about two people being emancipated from the traps in their lives. It was also a wonderful observation of the American culture and where we place our values and what's important to us. Billy Wilder saw America as few people in America saw it because we're too close. He became uh, an Americophile and told us what our culture was like. Coming from a foreign culture, he felt he was perhaps a keener observer of American behavior and American culture than one who is born here and takes it for granted. Wilder's take on the business culture is heartless, cold, 
everyone for himself. How do we rise above the crowd and rise in the corporate ladder? How far will you go? How sordid or seedy a thing will you do in order to accomplish your end? Why don't you grow up, Baxter? Be a mensch. You know what that means? I'm not sure. A mensch, a human being. Don't lose your humanity. Don't lose your humanity in return for the key to the executive washroom. The Dr. Dreyfus character, he speaks for all of us, I think. And as true as it was at the time the film was made, it is just as true today. That is the great strength of Billy. He addressed subjects that continue to bedevil our society. The ending in the apartment is one of the great endings. First of all, it's anti-cliché, which is what Wilder was always trying to do. He hated sentimentality, and he didn't want this to be sentimental. And at the time, too, I think partly because of the incredible success of the final line in Some Like It Hot, Nobody's Perfect, he wanted to have something that perhaps uh, people would also remember. And Wilder always wanted to leave you with one of these knockout lines that you'll remember forever. These lines that you can't talk. Did you hear what I said, Miss Kubelik? I absolutely adore you. Shut up and deal. That's real, it's tangible, it's not, oh yes, I love you too, no. Maybe they'll get to that place, who knows. But for now, this is it, shut up and deal. The apartment had an extremely mixed reaction from critics. There were headlines, Wilder's latest film is revolting, said one headline in Chicago. Pauline Kael called it a dirty fairy tale and found it unpleasant. Somebody in England said it was an example of glorious bad taste. Billy didn't know where it was going to go, whether it was going to be a success, whether it was going to be a failure. He had no idea. I remember Bosley Crowther writing an interview for the New York Times saying, Shirley and Jack and Billy Wilder don't know if they're making a comedy or a drama. He didn't get it. There were other critics who could really see the film for what it was as a very complex portrait of life in the corporate world and what it takes to hold on to your humanity. Lemon always said, Wilder grew a rose in a garbage pail. People were moved by it, and it hit home, just as it does today. And, of course, it went on to win Academy Awards. The film won the Oscars for Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and Best Director. Wilder was only the second person in Oscar history to win three personal Oscars in one night. So this was a great triumph. This, to me, is the most perfect Oscar acceptance speech in history because Mr. Wilder and Mr. Diamond, they heard their names, they walked up on stage, received their Oscars, leaned over the one mic at the podium, and my father said, thank you, Billy Wilder. And Billy Wilder said, thank you, I.A.L. Diamond. And they walked off. That was it. The apartment was really sort of the peak for Billy Wilder. Certainly, he considered it one of the major films of his career. This film endures because it doesn't follow a model and creates its own model. It mixes genres in a way that people appreciate now more than even at the time. You can't really tell whether a film is a great film until time goes by, but this movie was good when it came out, and it's even greater today.